Hi, I'm Pat Sloan. Welcome to my neighborhood. This is my fireside chat, and I want to tell you this week we were down in Harrisonburg, Virginia, and I got to go into the quilt museum and see the current exhibit, which is leaving soon. So if you're wanting to see it, get down there. I had a chance to see an amazing red and white quilt that I'd only ever seen in publications, books, magazines, and so it was stunning. It was just so awesome to see it. I will put that picture on my page for the fireside chat so you can see that quilt and I'll tell you the maker's name, etc. cetera. Uh, so I wanna encourage you, if you have never been to a quilt museum and you are able to, you should stop You know, your town, the town over, on your travels. There are not a lot of quilt specific museums. You know, I just talked to the CEO of the uh, National Quilt Museum in Paducah, uh, and there are, Nebraska has one, Colorado, uh, California, I know there's a few others, I think up in New Hampshire. Uh, so what I wanna do is I think I need to make a list because I don't know of a comprehensive list of quilt museums, and I really think that I should put that down as something to do. Uh, so if you happen to know of one, leave me a comment. I'd love love to know if you've been to one, have, you know, which one is, you know, you want to go to that you've never been to, that kind of a thing. So um, during my fireside chat, I tell you about what's going on, uh, projects, kind of project status, uh, upcoming things, chit chat, chit chat, it's all good chit chat. Uh, so if you have been uh, listening to my podcast, I have an announcement to make about the podcast. If you've already listened to the one for today, then you know. <laughs> Uh, but if you have not yet or have never listened or rarely listened, I have uh, a change for the podcast. The Ameri I've been running my podcast for American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. I produce it and I host it for the magazine. And I've worked with them for eight years. Magazine people are amazing. I love working with them. Uh, they're making a change. So the show will be now uh, run by the editors at American Patchwork and Quilting. You've heard them on my shows. They are great. They are super knowledgeable. So they are starting a brand new American Patchwork and Quilting editor show. Uh, same time in uh, Monday afternoons. And uh, if you're subscribed, you'll continue to get the subscription. Nothing will change there. But what does change is that I won't be working with them anymore. So I won't be hosting the podcast for them. I won't be on the show. So today was my last podcast. I've been doing podcasts for almost 10 years. Uh, probably about 10 years ago is when I started planning to start mine. So it's been an amazing project. The editor sent me this. This is just, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at this bouquet. Just I think I cried when it showed up. Just, oh, it's so gorgeous. They're great to work with. You're going to, you're going to enjoy their show. Uh, what this means for me is that I have a whole lot of other things I do. You know that, you've been here. You know I do books and fabric and uh, I do Orifil thread and I have sew-alongs, tons of sew-alongs. And now I will have a little time that I didn't have before to work on a few projects, Ooh, I'm gonna look at the flowers over here. <laughs> I'll have a time for a few projects that I've been wanting to do, and I just had no extra time to do them. And so I have this beautiful list of projects that I wanna do the, for you, with you, fun stuff, and so that'll be what I can now put into action. Over the next uh, few months, I'll be planning out things, and so you'll find uh, new stuff that I, that I have coming up. So stay tuned, stay tuned. It's exciting, doors open, doors close. Things change, and I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to have done a podcast for 10 years, and now I am equally thrilled to be able to go on and do a few other type of projects. Like the fireside chat. This might become a little bit different format over time, a few different things I might add in, but for today I want to do my normal stuff and one is I've been sharing snacks. Like I got to, I got to thinking about this when I was looking around so you can see my yeah. So I was looking around and I was like I don't really have many snacks in the house right now. I have mint M&Ms. Do you like mint M&Ms? 
they, they used to come out just at Christmas and I um, now they come out all the time and I love them I love that mint flavor but I'm sure they're not for everybody and I the thing do I need to find 52 snacks so that I can uh, have a snack a week I <laughs> that's a lot of snacks you'll probably see repeat snacks I'm thinking there might be some repeats all right so let's look at what we are um, what's going on the okay let's first do Main Street Main Street is the movie theater Ta -da! this is the um, country store fabric and the movie theater in Cheeky I just love this I love both the fabrics but this one just like oh it's so exciting every time I it's like working with cotton candy or something it's just that colors uh, if you um, if you like the cheeky fabric there's still fat quarter bundles so I will link you up to everything here at YouTube at the Facebook and then over at my website for fireside chats I have a, a website page for the fireside chats you can get all the info from the show there the other uh, project that's this week is uh, continuing on is uh, Winter Wonderland. Let me show you my project bin here that fits perfectly in my project bin. So Winter Wonderland is uh, from is this book, and we're doing Sleigh Bell sam Sampler, which is the f the cover the cover project is the Sleigh Bell Sampler, and I did block one already to show you just how cute it is with the kit so fat quarter shop put together this super awesome kit and I showed you that last week so everything is in there that you need Thursday we are doing block two and if you have not done block one yet you'll do one and two they're very very fast so every week I will show you a uh, some I'll show you the block I'm not I'm sorry not every week these are every other week twice a month every other week for um, the sleigh bell sampler I will show you a block and then um, something you know the picture of it maybe a little tip but super these are super easy that's the reason we're doing them in the summer you know we want we want easy sewing so there won't be a whole lot of tips involved but anything that I do have I'll at least show you the block and maybe we'll have other things going on I also wanted to be sewing <clears throat> from my uh, celebrate the seasons for the summer and I put two of the summer projects there's the other one above the sailboat I put them up here on my triangle quilt from my uh, quarter square triangle quilt from my triangle book so these are two of the projects and then there's a patchwork pillow that you could do so July and August you want to work if you're going to sew along something for summer from my celebrate the seasons then you want to make one of these or the pillow the patchwork pillow and then in late August we'll do a um, show and tell page and then a giveaway so you need to you need to start working on those and I know and I need to write about it on a blog post okay the other project coming up is the witches uh, night out in July and this is a great little spiral bound book it's from so Emma and I uh, I did the pumpkin so you can see the first pumpkin block it's tiny there's different sizes so you can see on here see there's different sizes on on the quilt so this is the first one now you get an idea for how big it is there is a starter bundle I showed you which is not the same fabric although some of this fabric is now in the store and so the kits are being made for those people who order kits which were sold out but there's bolts of the some of the fabric and so I will link over in case you wanted to add a piece or two like you want to get the starter bundle and then maybe add a piece or two into it the starter bundle is very tonal and it works um, it will work beautifully up with the uh, with the uh, regular block it'll look very similar to the original quilt <clears throat> All right, another thing somebody asked me. Oh, wait, wait, no, not that, not that yet. <laughs> I have like a list going on in my head. What are all the things to show you? Um, I have a discount this week that I want to be sure it goes through the 30th, goes through the end of the month for the Gemini machine. And that's the die cut machine. And here is what, <clears throat> here's what one of the dies looks like so what you see in here is not a picture that's the actual dies and they look they look just like that so they are thin metal and they have a ridge and when they go through the machine it presses 
Uh, and this discount is for a machine uh, with a Build-A-Block plus these dies. So here's the tumbler. And this is the one I want to try first. Really, I'd like to do that this week. I'd like to run it through. And if I do, fingers crossed, if I do, I will do a video because I'd like to take my Bonnie Lane fabric and do a tumbler for my mom, who is the Bonnie Lane. On my website, I have all of, the, I'll link to you because Jen Tyrone did a video of all of these, like not only cutting them out, but sewing them uh, for these units. This is the strip cutter, and this you actually cut strips. See the back? So you cut strips of fabric with this. I know, it's brilliant. You'll have to watch her video. It is brilliant. Then the apple core, which is super cute. I've always loved the apple core block. And uh, the orange peel, which is applique. Uh, so that's cute. And Jen does a really easy way of applique with it. You're gonna love that. And then the Dresden, Dresden plates. I'm a huge Dresden plate fan, so I am going to want to do that for sure. So that discount runs through the 30th. And uh, if you've already got a machine, there are some dies. The page that I link you to, the items on that page, which has a couple other neat tools on it, are um, what's on sale with my, with my discount. So that is how that works. You can buy other things from the site, from Crafters Companion. They just won't be on the discount, just those items. Okay, I had a question about the, uh, somebody asked me, a couple people asked me, would I show the recipe box again? And I was like, of course, of course. Let's take a look. This is uh, Lori Holt's recipe box. It's so cute. And personally, I'm in great need of a new recipe box. Mine is like an ugly plastic blue, like, like, ugh, like really bad. And so I'm just thinking of taking that and just dumping it right in here. The cards are back in stock. Like there's the divider cards. So she's got, you know, these kind of with all with like her fabric on them. And then she has cute little index cards. So if you want to write out a recipe, the pig is actually some of these are all like her drawings, her applique, but there's actually a patchwork pig that is super cute. That's her pattern. So these I will link you up. So if you are in need of a cute recipe box, uh, you know, you don't have, you could keep, you know, notes you have about quilt projects in here. It wouldn't have to be recipes, but this is designed for recipes. So I had a small finish this week, and I really feel like the finishes are like nutty for me. Like lately I have a bunch of stuff I can't show you yet, and so I finished this. Yeah, big time. These are... <laughs> It's like, it seems like crazy. This is my finish. I'm going to put it on my website page, though. <clears throat> I have a page with all the finishes. I'm going to put that on there. I think it counts. So, I, but while I was doing this, I did the um, binding by hand, hand applique, the binding. And I got to, I was doing that. Something happened that made, really made me think and made me stop. I was like, oh, wow. I wonder if this happens to you. And I'm thinking it might, because a lot of people will say, oh, I don't like to hand applique. You know, I don't like to do hand work. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was I was using my little needle case. This is one that I made like when I first started quilting, like a really long time ago. It's made from wool. Here's the inside. I have this uh, flag. It was like a flag fabric. So I use that inside. But what I was doing is like, this is just random needles and a few pins that I keep in here. And this is kept in a project bag. And so I started, I was doing this hand binding and I thought, this, is, this needle is too thick. It is not, it is not pulling through, it's too thick. So I changed needles and then merrily went along my way. But what that made me think is that I wonder if some of you are doing hand work with a needle that's too thick because to go through two layers of the fold for the binding and then grab the backing fabric, which is a third layer, and then you're probably grabbing batting occasionally. That's a thicker fourth layer. That's a lot of layers to needle through, needle through and pull. So let's look at a needle case, uh, a needle kit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Bowen has these uh, little packages of needles. If you're in the sew sampler last month, you got these in your sew sampler box from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, it, it, Bowen is a French needle company started in 1833. They tell you right on there. So these needle cases are, or needle kits rather, are pretty, pretty nifty. 
let's go in a little closer because I want to show you what we're looking at here and describe to you what you might do if you think your um, needle might be too thick. Or if you're having trouble pulling the needle through, to me that means the needle's too thick. So they put together this really nice package and it tells you needle sizes below, it has them grouped, and then up here is like embroidery, tapestry, straw, darning, and sharps. So you can see these needles are thicker. And then down here, these needles are thinner. I mean, you can, you can see that just visually looking at them. So that if you were pulling, let's say you were doing something here with a sharp, which like one of these bigger sharps, because maybe it was easier to thread it, so you use a bigger eye needle. Well, maybe it's pulled, like you're pulling, pulling, tugging. Instead, unthread that and go down to something smaller, like down here. This is kind of what I use, is really down at this end. Not the two last two, but that third one. Uh, so give that a try. See if it, um, if it helps, if you think that that might be something, you know, useful. Speaking of this, let's talk about thread, which is what you put in the needle. Um, if you've not picked up any of my thread kits, this is my brand new thread kit, the perfect box of neutrals. And in it are tans and grays with a white and a black. And these are the shades that I find the most useful. They will blend with so many things. And then uh, they're kind of my go-to for piecing, uh, for even for some uh, applique or you know bindings. This is a go-to kit. And it is on sale right now. So they are, these are the smaller size spools. So I will link you up to that if you want to try out my kit. And then you'll see the color numbers that I like. And then you can just replace those color numbers. You could get the bigger spools next time instead of the smaller spools. So this is always useful to have like a base. And then you know what colors you're dealing with. So that's my, my perfect box of neutrals. And so I had this thought. And I want to see what you think. Because let's have the pretty flowers in the picture a little bit. Uh, whee. There we go. Get them around. There we go. <laughs> Put them on the edge. We can enjoy them. So I was uh, working on the hexagons, which, you know, I have like one, one seam here, and then this guy is ready to applique down to the, to the gray, because I'm still going with that plan, appliquing them all on gray. But what got me thinking was, I think I would like to experiment with having a, like twice a week that there's a theme for what I work on. Like that night, usually I do this kind of stuff in the evening, but I might do it during the day, you know, like I work on a project. But I'm thinking I need to have like maybe a UFO day, like on Fridays, let's say. On Fridays, I do UFOs. And that, I mean, at least a little bit, maybe not a ton, but at least a little bit. Like right now, the one that's on my design wall with the ballerina fabric and the oranges and pinks, it is so close to being a top that if I had one, like this week, if I took Friday and said, okay, then I'm going to finish that up, then it would be done. And I could, you know, send it off to be quilted. Uh, I could get a binding done. I, I'm thinking then maybe one other day of the week, I could do something like, hexagon day or cross stitch day I could be more specific like that or I could say handwork day or uh, maybe that's a sew along day like Tuesdays or sew along day so I'm thinking two days a week to try that where I will have and then if I do that I want you to tell me do you like that idea does that sound like a good idea if it if it if it does then what um, I can do is like on my Facebook group, that will be the focus for the evening. You know, I'll probably put up a little picture of like what I'm working on for that night. And then everybody can put on there what it is they need to work on for, you know, for that day, that night um, in the theme of what, what it is. Like I'm liking UFO Fridays. I don't know. It just seems appropriate for some reason. End of week, start of the weekend. Let's get some work on those UFOs. Get them done. That's Get them done. Okay. I'm really curious to see if that interests you, if that's something that you, um, if you like to be that structured. The thing is, I don't like to be too structured. I don't like to say, I have to do this on a certain day. That, um, 
that's not real motivating for me. I like to have a bit more flexibility, but that's what I'm thinking topic wise. I have enough UFOs once a week to work on UFOs the rest of my life. I mean, there's always going to be a new one created. So that's super, I'm super good with that one. Then I'm thinking like Tuesday night would be, because Wednesday we always have Block Wednesday. You know, so we can't do Wednesday, but I'm thinking Tuesday night might be, I might have project night, um, handwork night, something where maybe I'm have a focus, you know, maybe I will do cross stitch night, you know, because I want to get some of those, get, get into that more, maybe one night a week. Who knows, you know, so tell me what you think. Another couple items I want to show you is I got in this new bag from Fat Quarter Shop and it's another Lori Holt, uh, bag, but this is, uh, Stitching is my cardio. Yeah, I love bags. I'm thinking I need to embroider my name on here, like somewhere, you know, because it's got a nice big zipper, you know, not too big, but not too tight, but those tiny ones, so you can get hold of it. Do you ever tie like fabric on through the end there, you know, like so you can pull it more easily? That works too. Okay, I got a fabric bundle in because, let me tell you what's going on. For my summer, I am writing a book and it is like my 37th book, I think, which uh, whee, it's a lot of books. Huh? I generally write one book a year now, but I used to write two books a year. And actually one year I wrote four, four books in one year. That was a crazy year. Uh, you know, so the process is uh, for me to get all the information for book writing you know, like what is my theme so i have the theme already um get most of the i have most of the designs i have the designs you know get them sort of approved and then i have to start collecting the fabric so that's what i've been doing recently is collecting in some fabric uh like this and like some other project you know some other fabrics you've seen that i've got in in they're here so that i can use them to do the quilts and the projects for the book and i know some authors like to you know design some things make something design some things and they stretch it out they may work on it for a year for their book and then send it off to be done because they want to intersperse it between their other workflow um, me i prefer to do it all at once i like to say okay now now go you know so basically in july and august I will be doing the projects for the book and writing the patterns and then by the end of August send it all off. So that means I would be doing that along with our sew alongs and the fireside chat and any other videos I might do because I have some thoughts on you know a couple of little short videos of popping those out there which reminds me if you have not subscribed if you're on my Facebook group click over to YouTube and subscribe because then you can click the bell and get a notice that a new video has been released. And if you're here on YouTube and just watching, click down and hit the subscribe and the bell to get the notices. That way you're always going to see, um, see that there's a new one because I, I will uh, often just put up a, maybe if I do a little quick tutorial, I was trying something, I'll film it and I'll put it up. That's some of the new things that I'm thinking about some of the things I've always wanted to do but haven't really had the time to do so I will I will do those okay my good buddy Joanna Figueroa designs beautiful gorgeous yummy fabrics she is fig tree and company and I thought I'd show you this line which is called Chantilly we have actually have a town here called Chantilly right next pretty much right next door to mine and this particular grouping is super soft colors. Very pretty corals with got like little strawberries on them. And then this really nice green. Got a bit of a glare there. Can you see it? And a light like sort of ock. Ah. There, there's like an uh, apricot and this beautiful light aqua. Okay, this is not working. Let me pull this down like right there. There we go. Okay. Oh. Pull this in here. Now you can see a little better. There we go. Greens. And she's got a little gray, a little taupe. It's more like taupe. That sort of brownie color. And this is the peach off-whites. The beautiful, beautiful aqua. 
There's one with the rose. That looks really nice. And really pretty apricot on the other end here. This light colors. Those are really gorgeous. Okay, so that's Joanna's fabric that I will be working with. And uh, just before I go, while I got this down here, look, 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 look. Let me pull this out. Socks, 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 socks. I am so excited. Scissor socks. There's all these cute socks out there. I gotta open this up. And I had to order a pair. I'm like, yes, cute socks. Oh, darling. I'll put a link to everything so that you can, can find them. You know, don't want you to not, don't want you to miss out on anything. You gotta find them. <laughs> it's always good. Okay. Let's talk, let's talk about the giveaway. Always at the end of, end of the show every week, um, most weeks, and it's not gonna be every week, not all 52 of the year, but you know, probably, probably 45 weeks out of the year, I'll do a giveaway. And recently, um, over the last, and over the next couple weeks, I will be showcasing uh, some of my fellow designers. You know, so, oh, before the giveaway, I almost forgot. I knew I had to go get this paper and that made me remember. The charity uh, quilt, the charity sew along with Fat Quarter Shop and United Notions Moda has, is done. It's completed. And the tally is in for what we raised for um, Make a Wish. You have done amazing. You guys are incredible. So let me give you the the um, start at the bottom where the two the two quilts that were up for auction. Let's start there. Mine and Melissa Corey's. Uh, they both sold for uh, went up for auction for bid for almost the identical price. I think mine was seven seventeen and hers was seven twenty. So almost identical price, which raised a thousand four hundred thirty seven dollars. Then we have your donations so when you were doing the sew along for the charity quilt you donated every time you did a block or you gave a big lump donation a lot of you did that and you raised twenty one thousand six hundred and forty eight dollars and ninety six cents so i have a giggle like ninety six cents somebody uh did that <laughs> who knows how that happened uh then uh United Notions Moda, Moda Fabrics, is Mark Dunn, the president and owner of Moda, is donating $10,000 to make a wish. And then Kimberly and her husband, Kevin Jolly, of the Fat Quarter Shop, they are donating $10,000 for make a wish. So in grand total, we have earned $43,085.96. <laughs> for make a wish. Kimberly told me that how this works is um, depending on the pricing of the wish, the wishes are, are, you know, will cost so much and that this should cover three wishes and most likely will cover four wishes. It just depends on the cost of the wish uh, for the child, but incredible, incredible um, donations and uh, for uh, awesome, awesome charity. So thank you everybody. Okay, now, before we get to the giveaway for this week, I forgot that uh, the flower bouquet, I have uh, the winner, the random number picker. Uh, there were like 47 people who entered their flower bouquet quilt top, which is pretty darn good. You guys worked hard. I know rolling into summer, that makes it a little harder to sometimes focus because you got a lot of other activities come up, things you have to do, vacation maybe. <laughs> so it was Patty Bookless. And Patty's um, Pretty Quilt was my random number picker, and I think it was number 15. So I put it on the page and put a picture of her quilt on the page, and I've emailed her uh, prior to the show, and she's written me back. So that's great. All right, last week's uh, prize was from my friend Cheryl Lynch, who does these super creative mosaics. There, uh, here's like some of the other ones on the back. You can see she does uh, really, I like the flamingo, but she does really neat these mosaics and she has a actual ruler that does them so that you can cut and the, she provided a kit with everything in it to make this dragonfly, including her ruler. 
So that is super cool. And I put a couple little trinkets in there in the bag too. So this goes to, this, this prize goes to Kay McCaffrey. And Kay uh, answered the question of the week and the question last week was where is your favorite place in your town? Where in your town do you like to go? You know, where is your favorite spot? So Kay's favorite spot is the Grand Theater. Her town has a theater called the Grand Theater. She said it was a, an old movie theater and that they still run first run movies for $3.50. It's like, wow, that would be really cool to go to. Uh, what I love is that the random number picker picks somebody with a movie theater and today in this week's theme is movie theaters. It's like, how does that happen? So that is that is great. So I will write Kay, I will email Kay, and then uh, that can go off to her. So this week, I'm showcasing more of my friends. And Joanna, that I just showed you her fabric, this beautiful fabric here, Chantilly. Um, I have a bundle of one of her, uh, a bundle of one of her prior fabric lines. Uh, and there it is. So these are, I think, fat eights, uh, beautiful colors, a little bit different colors, a little deeper colors. And so you get the winner this week will receive this, um, which is uh, fabric from the fabric that's uh, fig tree, designed by fig tree. And uh, I have a bundle of patterns from Heather Black. And Heather Black's company is called Quilt She lives in Massachusetts, it's a clever name. And she is an award-winning designer. Uh, you know, she's, her quilts have won awards. She's a, a long armor. And so I'll show you her patterns. So she does a much more contemporary look, a much more modern look. And she shows her beautiful quilting on the pattern. So that is neat. So you can see it. And I just love, she does lots of curves. She really likes curves. And this is my favorite, I think. This one, the mountain scene. I just adore this. I think it is so clever. That's the thing is her patterns are really clever. I love the way she does this. So if you would all go visit uh, Heather and, and Cheryl Lynch and see their websites, I'll put the link there so you can see what they do. I know Cheryl Venz uh, throughout the country, so you might even have met her at some point. So the question this week, drum roll, is I want to know what your favorite picnic food is. What food do you have to have at a picnic? You know, like for me, I have to have pickles, sweet pickles. I like gherkins because I never buy gherkins, but they seem like picnic food. You know, gherkins are those little tiny pickles, little like look like mini pickles, but they have to be sweet. And I also have to have watermelon. So it has to be summer picnics to have watermelon, <laughs> but you have gherkins any time of the year. So tell me what your, tell me in the comments, over at my website, you know, go to my website. If you leave it here, I'll look here, but it's best to go to my website because I can get your email much easier there uh, to let you know. So I'm always looking over there if that's where you, you need to go. Um, tell me what your favorite picnic food is. If you have a recipe, leave it or a link to it. Like if you use a recipe off the internet, link over to it. I'd love to, to know what your favorite food is. So I will end with uh, thanking you and thanking American Patchwork and Quilting again for um, being such fabulous partners for my podcast for the last uh, nine, eight years and for uh, all my guests who have been on the show and all of you who have listened to my podcast and I look forward to having you here with me at the Fireside Chat and all the new fun things that I have coming up for us to do. So I'm Pat Sloan. I will see you next week right here Monday night.